Do, 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 do. One, two, three, four, five. This is a microphone check. And my microphone would appear to be working. I do hear you. Ken? Yes. Ken? Okay. I'll remember Ken. Yeah, could you just write Ken instead of Patty there? Thanks. Just Ken. Just in case I might slip and call him Patty. <laughs> Crazier things have happened. Ah, well, sorry. Great, That's all right, David. How are you doing? I'm well. I'm very well. I'm, uh, I'm in Disney World. Well, you can't do much better than that. How, how could you not do better than that, exactly? <laughs> I grew up with a Partridge family, and I think that you were really, are really, one of the last huge teen idols, because uh, back then, you know, of course, there were the three networks. We didn't have cable. That's there was right. a big focus on what was happening in the mass media, and you guys were huge. You, in particular, were huge. Yeah, it's, it's a much different world that we live in as a result of, as you quite rightly said, the media is now, there's so many, people are so much more accessible and there's so many other options. In those days there were three networks and all of America was watching one of those three and fortunately for me in those years, um, my records and my television show, The Partridge Family, were so successful because we had the audience and uh, it was a very well conceived and, and produced television show. Um, I had a great time uh, being a, as a part of that family, and I mean off stage, not just on stage. Um, creatively, it left me a lot for me, you know, to be desired. I was a very serious actor before I did that. Um, quite contrary to the image that was portrayed on television, and my book deals a lot about what it's like to have your own identity robbed from you and have people perceive you as this sweet, innocent sort of... I, I thought it was funny because, you know, I loved playing an airhead and I loved being kind of a male bimbo. Um, I, th I never thought people would actually perceive me as that. And uh, it, the comedy in the show, from conflict comes great comedy, and Susan was very serious and I was kind of like a flake. And I just never assumed that it would be come such a burden for me to carry in my life. Fortunately, I've had the best year of my life uh, being on Broadway and Blood Brothers and now with a book and I wrote the theme to John Larroquette's new show. So it's been a good uh, few years for me. Yeah, and it seemed like it took you many years to get over it. In the mid-70s, I remember the Rolling Stone uh, photo, which caused yeah. a lot of controversy. Yeah, then... very controversial because of my image. Sure. That, that was really the, the only time people got to see or hear David's voice that wasn't spoken by people who were creating the image that was selling so well. They made a half a billion dollars marketing this sweet, innocent guy, and I wasn't that guy. I didn't feel worthy of all of it, and I, in a way, I thought, well, you know, America has bought this dream, and I'm not anywhere near up to being that guy. Um, I wonder if they knew me, if they would really love me. And uh, it was very difficult. At 19, I was certainly not able, I wasn't secure enough and didn't know myself well enough. It took me a long time. I had some very dark years. I suffered, uh, I was struggled with a real bad bout of alcohol abuse and, and drug abuse during the late 1970s when I had been retired. Um, and, and it took me a long time to get over it. I, I was very ashamed of that for a long time. I deal openly and honestly and talk about all of what it was like uh, in my book, and I hope people get some insight, and I hope it's been able to be, at, 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 I've heard, inspirational to some that have read it, that you know you can survive it, and if you got the talent and you have the perseverance, you can accomplish anything you want to accomplish in your life, and in my case, it's getting happy and feeling really good about being this person. Everywhere I go, people recognize me and tell me what a positive influence I've had on their life, and I'm very flattered by that. It means a lot. Well, I'm one of them. I grew up, uh, as I Thank said, watching you. the Partridge Family, and I really enjoyed Thanks. your work. Thank uh, you. The, uh, the anecdotes in the book are great, too, David, and especially Henry Kissinger visiting the Partridge Family set. <laughs> it, it's pretty funny. I, I, I found it remarkable when he came and visited the set. He was in shock. Um, if you can imagine at that time the Secretary of State and uh, you know he, he was like uh, um, Henry Kissinger as a spokesman and as a statesperson has such an image of being such a serious guy the idea of seeing him on uh, on the set <laughs> of the Partridge family and he was in shock when he found out the rest of them didn't sing that I was the only guy that was up there singing and playing he went no you mean Tracy she doesn't play the tambourine anyway <laughs> another time, another place, and Henry, I know it's a tough one for you now to, to have uh, 
somehow or another have, have come to terms with, but I'm sure he has. One of the most frustrating things for you, David, had to be you know being pigeonholed as you were and then trying to rebel back. You made an album with Mick Ronson. You worked with yep. a lot of very talented musicians, and yep. uh, a lot of people just shrugged and figured, well, it's David Cassidy. It's the same old stuff. Right, and, and you know, imagine being 25 years old and having to, to deal with that. Uh, suddenly to be told, yeah, you know, well, it's not, you're not cool anymore because you made records for kids that weren't even yours. That They were records that were made and, and designed and as well as they were made and designed, they were made for kids. Somehow or another, we as adults look at that and say, well, that's not credible and he's not cool. Now, fortunately, we've embraced it. And, and again, the 70s are very hip. It's very successful. Um, it's been back on Nick at Night. And the albums have been all put out on CD. And people look at it for its, for its merit now, because there were great musicians. And there were great pop songs. They just didn't reflect my own musical taste. And I hope, I mean, I, I shed a lot of insight into that in the book. Um, I hope if I have a chance to come to Indianapolis with Blood Brothers in this next year, you come out and see it and see my work today. I think it's, it's been a great year for me, and uh, I hope that you will uh, come and see it. Well, you'll be touring. That's great news. Yeah. David, thanks a lot. Will Sean be with you on the tour? Well, I don't know. Um, they've, offered the, uh, they've offered it to me, and, and I haven't actually signed a deal with them yet. I know the show is coming, and whether or not I'm with it, um, it's worth seeing without me, uh, believe me. If I, I hope I get a chance to go through America and do it with them. I got a lot going on. Uh, I have a pilot for a new series that they're developing for a different network, um, but a very successful producer that's developing the half-hour show for me for the fall of 95. So I hope you see my work back on television again this year. Well, David, it's been a real pleasure talking to you, and have a great day at Disney World. Thanks. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye.